So you dropped yourself a big tree. In this video, we're gonna show you guys how to limit without getting your, your saw stuck. A lot of times, big limbs will have a lot of weight to them, they'll have a lot of twist to them, there's a lot of pressure because this tree is pushing on the different limbs in different ways. So we're gonna show you a little cool uh, techniques to keep it so that way you get your guys who are pinched a little less and uh, so your buddy doesn't have to come save you or you have to go get another saw. When you're looking at a, a tree like this, you're, a lot of times I like to do the ones that are up on top first and then work down in down kind of succession of the log. The ones that are on the bottom are sometimes you're going to be able to cut, sometimes you're not going to be able to cut until you sever the logs and a couple pieces here and there. So we're at first, these two branches here, they're not touching the ground at all, so you can actually come from the top and go straight down. The ones that are on the bottom, there's a lot of up pressure because this, this tree is pushing down on the limb, so I'm gonna go underneath this on that third limb. I'm gonna go underneath it and cut from the bottom. If there is a large limb that uh, was bent over and it has a uh, pretty good size uh, roll to it, it, then you're gonna have to do kind of multiple cuts as that branch starts to roll. And I'm gonna see if I can find one here to show you what happens. I like to stand when you're looking at the when you're looking at the uh, tree. I like to stand on the left hand side so that way my chainsaw stays nice and close to, and I can make nice flush cuts. If I was doing the same thing on this side over here, if I was going in this direction, the bar is farther away from the tree on this side. So a lot of times you approach it so that way you can cut so that the saw stays nice and close to the tree. And if there is a if there's a branch on the other side. You uh, get that when you're coming on back, coming on the way back, or you'll have to cut with the top and kind of keep your keep your uh, limbing in this direction, basically. So as you're as you're cutting and as you're doing things, always kind of keep an escape route because this tree will want to roll one way when you start to relieve pressure, or the branches will have some spring back to them, or when they come, they want to fall at you. So this is where you're going to be kind of careful and kind of be agile with those cat-like reflexes. <laughs> Don't, don't rush this because um, this is where a lot of people get hurt and get pinched and get stranded in the woods. That was a nice, easy, perfect straight down. This one's gonna be in the same exact situation. It's gonna break a little bit and it's gonna split just because there's a lot of weight out there, especially I'll go slow and I'll cut it nice and slow and we'll see what happens. And then I'll cut another one kind of fast. These fibers would have stayed with uh, with the branch if I went a little quicker. When you go slow, this sometimes has a tendency to do that. Now on this branch here, I'm gonna go nice and slow and I'm just going to uh, cut it Cut it like right about here is how I'm gonna end up doing it. A lot of loggers will be mad at me for doing this because there's gonna be a little section that sticks up and it's not gonna be a nice flush log. <coughs> and the sawmills don't really like that. So if you're doing this in the woods and you're making high, if you're making lumber and logs and stuff like that, it's nice to keep everything as flush as you can so that way uh, it makes the guys that handle the logs a little easier. Plus it stacks nicer on log trucks. <laughs> And this limb here goes from one side to the next side. I'm not gonna go underneath this and cut it. I'm gonna come out here, because if anything happens, it doesn't pinch my saw, doesn't pinch me, and I can cut that later. It's better off getting it disconnected and everything as much as you can within reason. I'm gonna cut underneath this section here and uh, go kind of nice and slow, because there's probably gonna be a little bit of a twist to it. It is pine and we're starting to come out of dormancy, so it's probably just gonna pop. I'm not gonna have to worry about it, and I won't be able to show you pinching my saw. And that uh, you can saw it, you saw it kind of bust and, and uh, move a little bit and vibrate. That was the fibers breaking in it. So same thing. All these ones have a lot of are kind of leaning down. Gravity's helping pulling them down. So I'm going to cut all these from the top down. So 
on this branch, you saw I did a, a slight bottom cut and then I did a top cut. That helps the uh, that helps from the branch breaking and splitting and having a little small sticker. Less to clean up that way and less uh, stuff to handle. If you end up going too far into it, what it can do is the the branch will pinch your saw and you won't get out. And I'll do that one, that on this branch over here, and then I'll show you how to get it out. So with this branch here, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in a little too far, and what's going to happen is it's going to lean down and pinch my, uh, pinch my saw in there. So in this situation, a uh, really long branch or a branch that is too much for you to handle, a lot of times you're just going to have to get another chainsaw and cut on the top over here and the thing will fall. But what I can do with this branch is it's in a nice area, I can just lift up and my saw will come right out. Because you can only go in about a third uh, tops before a branch like this wants to catch you. All depending, situational of course, all depending on how much weight the hat tree, the branches have and if they've got leaves or needles or anything like that. And you always want to be careful because you saw how that gun hit, got hit and it rolled. So I want, I was able to move out of the way a little bit and my escape route is pretty kind of clear. Um, it's hard with a lot of branches and stuff because those get cleaned up after they get limbed. So you have to kind of just be agile in a situation like this. <laughs> this guy here uh, has a lot of down pressure, but on the very, very tips of it, there is, it's touching the ground and making contact with the ground. So to be safe, I'm going to go nice and slow on this bottom cut here uh, to see how, it, how their branch reacts. And if it has more up pressure, I should be able to just continue all the way through. Um, and if the cut doesn't open up any, then I'm going to come out and then cut it from the top. In this, you can see this branch started to lift, so I'm just going to continue my cut all the way up. We'll do this one here in full speed. Always pay attention to what the tree is doing. This is where, as you kind of keep going, the ones, the branches that are sticking up, make sure you limb those ones as well, because if the tree does roll and you have to get away, those branches can catch you. So just try and do three quarters of the limbing as you go. So there's basically one little one little side of the tree. When it tree does finish rolling, uh, you're gonna clip all those guys off at the same time, which are basically like the branches and the stubs that are on the bottom of the tree. This branch here has a uh, a little bit of a sweep to it. It's got a little branch that's touching over there, so I'm gonna go the back side, kind of around the corner a little bit, and just slowly cut that, see what happens. In like a branch like this, I'm gonna cut it in half, get it out of the way, so that way it doesn't catch me if I have to run past it. As you're cutting a branch, if the cut's continuing to open while you're cutting it, continue, keep going. If it's starting to close, stop and go on the other side. With this one here, uh, there's some, this branch is touching the ground way at the very bottom, so I can just continue my, uh, continue my cut uh, from the bottom all the way up. And just watch it and keep pay paying attention to the cut, but also pay attention to the tree, so that way if anything happens, you're ready for it.
as you're walking along. If you have to take base, if you have to take a step and move and ever take a hand off of a saw, what you want to do is always put your always put your uh, brake on because it's there's lots of branches, things happen, and you don't want that chain spinning for any reason. Around a knot, a lot of times what they call is reaction wood. The, the cells that make up for that, well, all that weight, there's compression wood and, and tension wood in there depending on the species of the tree that you're cutting. So a lot of times you'll see me come out, uh, I'll cut farther out, farther out the branch to get away from that reaction wood because it cuts much quicker. So if I want to sever a branch really quickly, I'll come out six, seven inches or whatever, cut it off, and then I'll finish uh, cutting the, the branch nice and flush um, after that weight is off so it doesn't pinch my saw. <laughs> If you were if you were to time those two cuts, the cut that's on the back side here is a little uh, a little slower because the reaction wood plus the diameter is a little bit bigger. So a lot of times you'll see me do that in, in other videos. So I'll have little stubs here and there. It makes it so that way I'm a little quicker. The ground guys so a lot of times don't like it, but eh, that's part of the job. <laughs> that guys is basically how you do it it's every single tree is different though so just gonna take some of these caveats that I've given you and kind of apply them and make them uh, make them work the best you can for you it's gonna take some practice you're gonna get stuck <laughs> and you're gonna have to have be rescued once in a while but that's okay go slow practice always start small and then slowly graduate to bigger trees um, and you guys will do just fine so keep it real and uh, like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one